In this episode, a new race is sprouting right next to us. Seems like we are no longer the only intelligent beings on the planet. They're not yet human, but no longer just machines. Apart from factories, they'll be in our homes, know our habits and weaknesses. When will we realize whether this is a good thing or a big mistake? Today, we're going to be talking about the Optimus Gen 3 and how it will help Elon Musk change or take over our world. In 2021, the entrepreneur held a keynote that's considered to be the big bang in humanoid robotics. It'll be a fundamental transformation for civilization as we know it. The whole world believed him, and hundreds of startups began urgent humanoid development, garnering exorbitant amounts of money in investments. Quick capsule review, a hundred billion dollars. That's how much known robotics companies received in five years. Seeing that, an entire country has chosen to facilitate this industry as a national strategy. If you guessed China, you'd be correct, since new humanoid machines appear almost daily in the Middle Kingdom. Therefore, the question is, can an entire nation fall victim? As a matter of fact, yes, Elon Musk can do it, because he's not a crazy scientist. He's a strategist, and optimization is his middle name. Musk has a plan, and we got a whiff of it. But let's break it down. Optimus Gen 3, coolest robot in the world, or what? What do we know about it so far? Gen 3 is a robot that you could actually potentially buy, and it will feature a new, according to Musk, exquisite design. It's not that the robot isn't beautiful enough at the moment. Engineers are said to be bringing Optimus architecture to quote-unquote the right solution. Basically, the robot isn't quite suitable for mass production just yet, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. The biggest change will be the appearance of the face. There's been reports that Samsung will supply Tesla with 8-inch OLED displays starting in 2027. And then there are persistent rumors that they're not at all for the entertainment of passengers in electric cars. Hmm. The thing is, OLEDs are cheaper, lighter, and don't require a separate backlight, but could also let Optimus express emotions and give text prompts to users. Let's get a poll going. How many think Musk should add a real face to the robot, and should users be able to upload their own images? Maybe even have Musk's face on an Optimus at the house? Let us know in the comments. On top, it's reported that Samsung Electromechanics is aiming to supply camera modules rumored to be designed specifically for robots. As a result, Elon Musk said the company already has version 2.5 ready. He hopes to finish refinements by early 2026 when mass production of Gen 3 should be launched. The company will first produce a couple of thousand robots just for itself to test run with real tasks at Tesla factories. About 50 robots of the second generation are already performing simple tasks at Palo Alto, but so far it's just walking and moving objects, supposedly batteries, and at about half the speed of a human. But the world eagerly awaits Optimus 3, already described by Musk as a masterpiece of engineering. It's this robot that should bring Musk trillions of dollars and become the focal point in implementing Master Plan 4.0 presented by the CEO of Tesla. Basically, up to 80% of the future value of the company will come from robots. And this is how they're thinking of doing it. Not a surprise, Tesla wants to build a single, vast ecosystem that rests on three pillars, autonomous electric transportation, sustainable energy, and robotics. Three principles are at the core of this focus. First, technology removes constraints. For example, a robot working for you in the factory and at home frees up your time to solve really important human problems, which is, you know, arguable at best, given the amount of time people spend on their phones looking at cat videos. Check out Eric Pickersgill for inspiration. And, uh, what would you do if Optimus worked for you? Let us know in the comments. Secondly, innovations must solve real problems. For example, reduce pollution, improve safety, and save people from routine or dangerous labor. The third principle is scale and access. Advanced solutions should be at everyone's fingertips. In other words, an Optimus robot in every home. Is this realistic? If Musk plans to produce 100,000 robots per month within five years? At the same time, Tesla's CEO estimates the total humanoid market capacity at 20 billion units. On a side note, that's more than double the amount of smartphones on the planet today. 
But why oh why of all the robots on earth is Optimus the one that will change your lives? Here's five stunning and unique items on its CV. Superpower number one is the ability to communicate. Remember Amika? Compared to Optimus, it's a demo. Since Gen 3 is almost the only robot today that can both talk and act, and it'll do exactly what you told it to. The main problem for robot developers today is that simply integrating generative AI does not cut it. A robot will still lack the ability to understand exactly how to do what you want it to do with its body. Optimus' only competitor here is Figure. Figure AI is developing its own language model, Helix, which combines vision, speech understanding, and action. But it only works with the torso thus far, meaning the robot understands commands that only require hands. Meanwhile, Optimus is rocking his whole body. Why is speech critical? Because the real world isn't a lab with precise instructions. It's different for a robot in everyday life where put it over there or do it carefully mean nothing. Where exactly is over there? How do we measure caution? Understanding natural language becomes the bridge between your desire and machine's actions. If the robot can clarify, restate, talk through the steps and confirm critical actions, it stops being just a machine and becomes a partner. Now imagine that in addition to understanding, it also has a dash of humor and a pinch of sarcasm. Currently, we know that Grok can be integrated into Optimus. Musk showed it. So far, the robot reacts with delay, but it gets the gist of the conversation and does what it's told. Let's go. Superpower number two. Tesla has a very special approach to teaching the robot. It's very, let's not mince words, human. According to real life Iron Man, this is the only right and fastest way to do it. The idea is the same as with autopilot, a single brain instead of dozens of unconnected modules. In most robots, environmental perception, planning, grip work, etc. are all in separate threads. Optimus has all that in a single one. Schematically, this is what it looks like. Sensors, neural network, movement. That is, see, understand, do. This approach allows it to learn on the fly, adjusting its behavior in case of success or error. Training is done with video. The robot watches massive amounts of videos, first person, side view, and so on. Optimus sees how a human moves, copies it and generalizes the experience. To avoid wasting time on rare or dangerous situations, synthetic data and simulation training are then added into the mix. The skill then goes on to be polished with reinforcement learning, where the robot refines its movements, learns how to correctly dose force, aptly intercept objects, and perform the task in such a way as to get the desired result. For example, the dancing video. All the movements in it were learned completely through simulation and immediately reproduced in reality. It's like if you watch Swan Lake from the couch. Get up and all of a sudden do 32 fuetes. Quote, I've never seen any technology evolve as fast as artificial intelligence. It's a supersonic tsunami. And Grok in this system becomes just a new layer, another brick of a unified brain where perception and speech are combined into one single behavior. Many laughed when Musk said he'd transfer the know-how from unmanned driving to robotics. Sure, there's a whole lot of difference between a car and a humanoid, but who got the last laugh now? Take video stream processing and vector space construction. These are equally suitable for both autopilot and humanoid robots. Then there's data acquisition and partitioning systems, as well as retraining algorithms. All of these have already been rolled out in all Tesla models. Finally, systems for automatic data partitioning and creating synthetic data based on the real one. This is transferable almost directly. This is how data is generated to train the robot in the simulation. So, is Musk a great visionary or let us know in the comments. On to the body now. Optimus Gen 3 will have the world's most advanced arms. That's what we call a killer feature in the war against Chinese robots and beyond. For comparison, Figure 02 robot's arms have 16 degrees of freedom, which is already pretty good, and it allows it to perform many movements and tasks. Tesla engineers, however, designed the arm for Optimus with 22 degrees of freedom, and that's just in the hand. Plus an additional 3 degrees in the wrist and forearm, which means the robot will have a total of 25 degrees of freedom per 
each arm. Pretty close to 27 human. And this is really important. The market is literally flooded with Chinese robots that can walk and balance. They can somersault, dance, even box a few, but they can't do anything with their hands or have very limited grasping ability. Yet, for a robot to be useful, both in industry and at home, it has to be able to do more than just grab and move an object. We expect a humanoid to, say, uncork a bottle, open a bag, clean a glass, and sew on a button. Try to pay attention to how your fingers and hands move when you make yourself a cup of coffee. Now imagine that you do not have half of the available movements. The task becomes really challenging really quickly. Check out the robot that Musk showed recently. What we see here is just a mock-up, because the previously unveiled arm for the third generation Optimus is slowing down all the production. What gives? Elon Musk was gonna stir up a ruckus this year by producing a thousand to five thousand robots, but in the process, turned out that the hands that were cool on paper weren't suitable for mass production. Concerns about the design were raised back in 2024 after the novelty was presented. Then, expert Scott Walker noted in his breakdown that while the arm does indeed look awesome, it obviously utilizes a hybrid design with drive via cables and actuators. This gives advanced motor skills, but requires significant hidden infrastructure, power supplies, motors, and control mechanisms. Walter suggested that such arms are difficult to scale without making components much smaller. And it looks like the expert was right. Recently, the media reported that robots without arms are piling up in the company's warehouses. It's reported that engineers have encountered overheating drives, low load capacities, rapid wear and tear of gears, and batteries. Musk gave the developers a couple of months to solve the problems and said that the production of robots will resume in early 2026. And here, it's logical to move on to Musk's superpowers, which is also the fourth reason for the uniqueness of the Optimus project. It's his ability to optimize the product and scale production. Tesla has already set up production of millions of cars and is ready to apply the same magic to the robot. Mass production will make Optimus cheaper and more affordable than any other. So what does Musk already have? The first trump card is Gigafactories. Tesla already produces almost 2 million cars a year. These factories are set up for a conveyor, foundry presses, batteries, electronics, final assembly. Musk knows how to turn a bold concept into an assembly line product. The second trump card is vertical integration. Tesla develops its own batteries, its own FSD computers, and its own circuit boards. That means less dependence on third-party suppliers and the ability to change designs quickly. For example, if a robot arm requires a redesign, Musk simply organizes it internally. The third trump card is global infrastructure. Tesla has already lined up a network of suppliers and logistics, training data centers, and its own chips. Even after the dojo shutdown, the company maintained its growth and development speed by switching to NVIDIA and Samsung GPUs. Other players only dream of this scale. Trump card number four is experience with cheaper technology. Musk aims to make Optimus relatively affordable with a price of around $30,000 per unit. This is only possible with mass production and strict cost control. And finally, data. Millions of Tesla cars are trained every day by neural networks. The same stack that learns to drive a car can be transferred to robot body control. Optimus developers can also use an ever-improving system, collecting data from video, partitioning it, and retraining neural networks. Competitors simply don't have that magnitude. Bottom line is that Elon Musk already has the factories, has the tech, the supplies, the scaling skills, and the data. So mass production of Optimus is not a fantasy, but a matter of time. Yet, you can only appreciate the full scale of the idea if you look at the entrepreneur's entire vision. Optimus is not just a robot, it's part of an automated future that Elon Musk is building for the rest of us and an important element of Tesla's entire ecosystem of products. Imagine, an electric car in the garage, a Powerwall battery at home, a mega pack for energy storage, branded charging stations, all managed through a single app. And now, a robot comes into the system. For the user, it's unprecedented capabilities with one account, an ecosystem of the future. The house itself decides when to turn on the lights and when to go into night mode. The car charges itself so that it doesn't overload the network. All notifications come in one app, and the robot here is the Nexus, the artificial intelligence controlling the house and the extra pair of hands that will do routine tasks for you. This ecosystem has a strong foundation. 
cars, energy, and now the robot all come together in one. Batteries, electronics, gigafactories, proprietary chips and computers on board, the largest supercharger network, home energy that aggregates into virtual power plants and even makes money from balancing the grid. The second layer is artificial intelligence that controls drones and robots. The third layer is services, robo-taxi, smart home energy, insurance, and the Tesla super app that connects everything. There's a direct parallel here with Apple. They have the App Store, iCloud, Apple Pay, Tesla has RoboTaxi, virtual power plant that connects thousands of home Powerwall batteries into a single network for energy management, insurance, and charging. And the robot will be the new customer for these services, opening up scenarios from household help to robotics as a service. That's when you rent out your robot to earn money, or conversely, don't buy, but rent an Android for your needs. The fourth layer is brand and channels. Tesla sells directly without intermediaries through the app and on its own platforms. And public demonstrations of the robot here are showcases of the entire ecosystem showing us what lies ahead. For example, the retro-futuristic Tesla Diner in Hollywood, which was sensationalized online. The experimental project united a diner, supercharger and optimus robot at a popcorn stand here you can put your car to charge order food directly from the cabin through the display and watch a movie open air but the main feature of the diner is optimus yes it was controlled by a cameraman but today all public demos of robots if they interact with people are done this way and of course musk did not fail to promise that next year the robot will already be a full-fledged waiter and bring you your burger to your car. By the way, Tesla Diner attracted attention also with its design. It's like a dream of the future, but with hints and nostalgia. Boomers will love it. The atmosphere reminds of a spaceship. Metal, neon, capsule chairs, but not super modern, as if from fantastic stories of the 50s and 60s. What do you think of this design? Let us know in the comments. But back to reality, people. Musk's grandiose plans are met with a lot of skepticism. We've been promised perfect universal androids for years now. But the recent World Humanoid Robot Games clearly show that so far, robots have struggled to perform even simple tasks. And we think that's a good thing. It's good for us to see the boundaries of 2025. So why should we believe Musk? Perhaps because here he's playing the field he's familiar with. He's already done the impossible once. Turned the electric car from a toy into a mass-hyped product with batteries and superchargers as the basis of energy infrastructure. He applies the same recipe to robots. Not just one spectacular prototype, but a chain. Factory, scale, over-the-air upgrades, ecosystem built around it. That's not a reason to believe, it's a reason to watch closely. Musk has the infrastructure, the experience, and an army of engineers to assemble at least four of the five critical layers of his ecosystem. Yes, the road is long, probably longer than the entrepreneur promises. But if it all comes together, we'll be in a world with a robot by our side for any task. And this is no longer a dream, but a plan that is turning into reality step by step. What do you guys think? Drop us a line in the comments, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our socials for more from the world of high tech.